Well, Peter, we're speaking today before your retirement's announced, but I suppose a little while after the decision was made by you. What are your emotions at this point? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, always a always a strange time that comes to every sportsman, I suppose. But you know, many contributing factors. But I mean, one of the one of the biggest ones, you know, I was reflecting on. You know, will the club, you know, re-sign me, and you know, what value do I have, and all the things that I, I was thinking about, and. I've had such a, a great relationship with um, with Pete Moores and, and and Mick Newell in particular, and I just I couldn't uh, face the reality of them having a conversation about me regarding my future, and I felt like I just wanted to take that out of their hands and and sort of take ownership of of the end of my career. Really, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, coming here for the last couple of years of my career has been been amazing even though in a in a very strange sort of time for the world but but ultimately like I said you know there are contributing factors you know the the, the young all-rounders within the squad who probably weren't ready for first team cricket when I signed and now winning games for the club so that's magnificent to see and I suppose you know at 40 years of age you've got to take a broader view of things and um, I suppose that old ad adage of uh, leaving a place in a better place than you found it, I, I really do feel that even though I haven't really had a, a massive input into that, um, I certainly feel like I'm, I'm leaving Trent Bridge as a player with a squad that can compete in all three formats and that's something, um, that's something to sort of look upon with a, with a smile on my face, I guess. Yeah, was something I was, um, was going to touch on because I suppose you came here two seasons ago when Notts had, had just been through a, a T20 semi-final defeat, had had a tough time in the red ball, and now you leave having won a blast medal. What do you attribute that turnaround to, having been in the dressing room for those two years? Well, it's a combination of things. You've got a, a great club, very supportive on the outside of things. Um, you've got a great coach and coaching staff, and you've got fantastic players. I think it's very obvious when you look at, you know, the maybe the last five years of, of, of Notts cricket, really, you look at, how many senior players have, have left, the, left the squad? Your James Taylors, Michael Lum, Chris Reid, Paul Franks, to name but a few. You know, uh, Brendan Taylor, you know, you know, very influential players. And, you know, replacing that doesn't, doesn't happen overnight. And, 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 and the process was always there and it was always happening. Obviously, like I said, the so-called disappointing season, you know, there was still a, a, a finals day uh, played by that squad but it was only a matter of time before they came of age I think as a group of players and like I said they've got the backing um, with a fantastic group of uh, group of coaches and the talent is has always been there but now there's a bit of maturity a little bit of a hardiness to this group as well and the results are now speaking for themselves. It will be I suppose finals day 2020 that will be your kind of crowning moment in a not shirt. I know we spoke about it not too long after but looking back a bit further on it now how do you remember that in the context of all you've achieved in your career? Yeah I mean it's, well, it's one of the highlights without doubt you know to, to sign for a club and win a trophy in your first season again even though I feel you know like I suppose I, I helped to ice that cake I mean I, obviously it was my first game in that particular tournament and I will always look on that day as you know being very proud really not really thinking that I was going to play a part at all and then to play a relatively sizable sort of uh, part in the final was something I'll always be very proud of and like I said that that shirt signed by the lads and that winner's medal is um, has pride of place back home in Somerset so you know it was it was without doubt you know the, the the sort of biggest moment of my two years here at the club but you know there are many things that have happened off the field that I'm also equally proud of in particular this year the work that um, I did captaining the second 11 uh, with with amazing support from Paul Franks you know to put us in a situation as a second 11 where we're winning games putting pressure on guys in the first team improving their levels and I think within that you you raise the the standard of cricket throughout the club and and again, there are many things that probably aren't as glamorous as a winner's medal, but are probably equally important to me and, um, and hopefully the, the, the club, and it will stand them in good stead. All those youngsters that maybe had my um, hopefully unique style of captaincy and, and leadership will, will hopefully uh, you know, stand them in good stead for the rest of their careers. 
Yeah, how do you rate that next generation you worked with? You speak about the players who have made it to the first team and are winning games of cricket, but those that are bubbling under, that maybe played second team cricket, got some chances in the uh, Royal London Cup as well. How, how are those stocks coming through? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just it's about performances in the first team. That's ultimately how you judge as a cricketer. But, you know, I've seen Joey Everson, Lyndon James, Liam Patterson White in particular really come of age, I think, over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, Obviously, I have a particular um, allegiance to the seam bowling all-rounders, Lyndon and Joey Everson. I mean, Joey Everson's had picked up a couple of injuries and this sort of stunted his first team opportunities. But every time he comes into the first team, I think his last game, he got five wickets. So, um, you know, he's a fantastic cricketer. And, and actually, I love their, their, their spirit. They, 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 those two in particular have got the spirit of an all-rounder, which is which is massively important. When you're that number six, seven batsman, you have to have that ability, not only as a, as a, from a technical point of view, but you have to have that ability as a character to be able to grab a game when it's not in a good position and turn it around for the club. And those two have certainly got that. You've got um, uh, Monty, Matt Montgomery, you know, who looks a really promising signing. Um, Calvin Harrison, obviously, I don't have to say much about his performances, but obviously I've known him for, for years and you know, put him on to bowl at Portland Road months and months and months ago. And, um, you know, he got five wickets there in the second level. I can remember having a phone call with Morsey. He said, this lad's really changed his game around since the last time I saw him. And, you know, what he's done, you know, in, in limited overs cricket in, that, in, in a short short career so far has been, been absolutely outstanding. So, you know, there are so many young players up behind um, the, the vast experienced uh, Knott's, Knott's first eleven. It's been, a, it's been a very strange two years, to say the very least, to be, uh, to be part of the club. I know we, we spoke when you were here two years ago about you wanting to, to connect with the members, those kinds of things like a pint in the pavilion. Some of those things just, just haven't been possible. But how much did it mean to you to have that one game out here in T20 in front of the uh, supporters and to, to show what you could do even in a shortened game? Yeah, I mean, it's, it has been completely bizarre, isn't it? As, as, as we were laughing about earlier, I've probably had, I've had more haircuts than nights out in Nottingham, which is, which is a bit of a shame, really, in, in, in many ways. But we, uh, we as the sort of cricket family, we, we make the best of a bad bunch. But, you know, that, that game in, uh, in, in particular against Yorkshire here, I think it was a, a rain-reduced game. And myself and Hales, you know, knocked off 70 in three and a half overs in front of a a decent sized crowd here at Treadbridge and, and, and that was that was something else really. Um, it was, you know, potentially my last sort of meaningful, meaningful contribution in a, in a not shirt. So, um, you know, to, to go out there with with Alex Hales and at one stage looked like I was going to uh, outscore him was, uh, was, was sort of like proof to myself that I still had a little bit in the locker. But, you know, there's um, there's been so many great times on and off the field, you know, playing with with guys that I hugely admire, you know, Samit Patel, um, Steve Mullaney, Alex Hales, you know, Joe Clark and Ben Duckett, you know, phenomenal talents. Um, Luke Fletcher has been absolutely outstanding this season um, and just seems to be getting better and better. Um, but what is always consistent with Luke Fletcher is he's one of the best blokes you'll ever, ever play cricket with. He's not only uh, heart and soul cricketer. He actually breathes life into other people around him and he's a very, very special individual and, and not so very lucky to have him in particular. But the group, the, the group have been, been fantastic. Um, that old cliche of, you know, I've, you know, I've been here a short space of time, but I've made a lot of uh, mates for life. And what's next? I've seen the, uh, the Euro Pro Tour is um, seeing you make some appearances. There's some media work as well. What does the future hold? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've always been a very keen golfer. Um, I, I got my handicap to, well, plus, so I was either plus three or plus four at the time. Um, you know, I was based at the Nottinghamshire. Uh, so, you know, my time here, I really, you know, I can't thank the Nottinghamshire Golf Club enough, actually. Uh, fantastic place to practice and play. And that's really taken my game to the next level. And I turned professional a few weeks ago. I've played two professional tournaments, had my first under par round, which is why I'm looking a bit bleary eyed today, because I drove all the way back from Scotland. So I had my first under par round yesterday at Levin Lynx um, as, as a pro. So that feels like a step in the right direction. And that's something I'll pursue over the, over the coming years. Uh, I'm working at finals day for the BBC with the TMS team. So that's going to be really great. I really love the game. I, I don't really know how I'll 
at this stage how I'll stay involved with cricket, but I love talking about the game. Um, I love being in the commentary box. I've really enjoyed my times I have spent with the BBC. I'm a far better player from the commentary box than I am actually on the field. So that's, um, that's something that's, uh, that I will hope to continue or, or maybe not. Um, yeah, so opportunities in the media are going to be are going to be really exciting for me, and also um, I've done a bit of like my cricket coaching and um, also the golf side of things. I'm going to be I've done all my tuition with the major manufacturers in golf to to do some club fitting, and at 12:30 on Saturday I'm I'm fitting my first uh, first golfer into a new set of irons. So that's you know lots of different things, and I suppose over the next sort of three or four months I'll just you know, find what fits, um, fits me really. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's unsure times really, because like we've obviously just come out of a global pandemic. So a lot of the things that I was doing in terms of uh, the media, the hospitality has pretty much been shut down for the last two years. I'm hoping it's going to build back up and, 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 and we'll see from there. But if anyone's watching and, and fancy giving me an opportunity, fancy giving me a job, I'm, I might need one in a few months time. So <laughs> whatever, whatever comes next, we, uh, we wish you all the very best with it. Thank you. Thanks very much.